We are going to talk about this equation. In which situation do we use this? For example, you might have seen this equation when you tried to analyze water pressure. Your teacher must have used small volume of water and said, The water pressure on the bottom side is a little bit larger than the pressure on the top. We can describe the difference by using dp. And you know, dp can be computed like this, because you can reduce dz. If you feel like you are tricked, this video can figure your questions out. Okay, let's get started. If you'd like to know the amount of small change in f, you can compute it by multiplying df dx by dx. That's what this equation is saying. Let's check it out. Here's a graph of f of x. Let's say x moves to the right only a little. Now, what we'd like to know is how much this point goes up and this amount is small change in f according to this equation the small change in f equals this but why since we are considering a small part we can regard this curve as a straight line so this length can be computed by multiplying the slope of this straight line by this width. What's the value of the slope? This is the value. You are already familiar with differential of a function, right? And then we can say that this amount is equal to the slope multiplied by dx. That's what this equation means. Is this idea important for us mechanical engineers? Yes, very much. Because, for example, as I have already told you in this video, if we'd like to know the value of water pressure, this equation will help us. We are going to consider this very small volume of water and write down forces applied to the volume. We don't know how different these pressures are from each other, so we will use dp as the difference. We still don't know the function of water pressure, but we feel like the function depends on the water depth. So we can describe this dp like this. We just used this logic. Okay, after we create an equation of motion where the acceleration is zero, or rather an equation of equilibrium, we will have this equation. I just organized this equation. And this equation is absolutely the same as this. If you integrate both sides of this, you can have this. Now, we succeeded in deriving the relation between water pressure and water depth. This logic is so useful, isn't it? Now, we have a clear idea of this equation. And that means we are ready to talk about this equation, total differential, and this equation as well. You know, this is called chain rule. So, in my next video, we are going to talk about total differential and chain rule. Let's call it a day. See you in my next video.